Good morning, Mr. James. Ah, uh, Miss Medworthy, this is a pleasure. Take a seat. <laughs> well, <clears throat> have you found me a husband yet? Well, now, Miss Medworthy, you must realise these things take time. I've been coming here for 30 years. <laughs> Every day I've been in. I know. Sometimes I feel married to you myself. You're not trying, Miss Medworthy. I've introduced you to 568 different men. Surely one of them must have fancied you. Well, one of them did, until he put his glasses on. Oh, uh, what happened? <laughs> well, I said he looked better without them. And what did he say? So do you. Well, I'm afraid I've got nothing for you at the moment. You've been right through the old stuff. But, don't worry, as soon as I get some new merchandise, I'll let you have first refusal. Well, hurry up, because <laughs> I'm all ready. <laughs> yes. See you I've been ready for 30 years. I know, and don't think I haven't been glad of the money. I can't wait too much longer. Of course not. I've already had four truces go out of fashion. You're all right. Don't worry. I'll let you know. Thank you. Good day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. James. Ah, uh, Miss Medworthy, <laughs> this is a pleasure. Take a seat. <laughs> Have you found me a husband yet? Well, now, Miss Medworthy, you must realise these things take time. I've been coming here for 30 years. Every day I've been in. I know. Sometimes I feel married to you myself. You're not trying, Miss Medworthy. I've introduced you to 568 different men. Surely <clears throat> one of them must have fancied you. Yeah, well, one of them did. Until he put his glasses on. Well, I said he looked better without them. <laughs> and what did he say? So do you. Well, I'm afraid I've got nothing for you at the moment. You've been right through the old stock. But don't worry. As soon as I get some new merchandise, I'll let you have first refusal. Well, hurry up, because <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm all ready. <laughs> yes, I can see you are. I've been ready for 30 years. <laughs> I know, and don't think I haven't been glad of the money. I can't wait much longer. Of course not. I've already had four trousseaus go out of fashion. You're all right. Don't worry. I'll let you know. Thank you. Good day. <laughs> Hello, my sweet. How's little Reginald today? Has Mummy been neglecting you? Good morning, Arnold. My, my. You do look droopy this morning. We'll have to keep an eye on you, won't we? <laughs> and how's our new arrival? Are you settling in okay? Oh yeah? I'm back, Emily, I'm back. I've taken Ronald for his walk around the park. Oh, good. I expect he enjoyed himself, didn't he? No, he fell mm. off. Oh, no. It's all right, I'll put it back on. Mm. Who do you want me to take out next? Um, can you take Timothy? He hasn't been out in three weeks. Would you like to go walkies, Timothy? I asked them to come and take a look at Andrew. But would you let them in, Augustus? <laughs> now don't worry, Andrew. We'll have you up and about in no time. The nice man will take care of you. <gasps> what a great apartment you have. I'm so glad you like it. You're different to what I'd expected. <laughs> well, you're so much more distinguished, experienced than I thought. But you might have brushed that flower off your hair. It spoils the whole effect. <laughs> Let me take your round. What exquisite shoulders you have, my dear. Oh. May I? Yes. And that beautiful neck. Oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> oh. flowers. I told you, I don't like the smell. Put them on. What's the matter with you? Hold your nose. Three quid's worth, throwing them about like that. Go on, pin it on. I can't 
manage. You do it. Now what's wrong? Oh. Put your finger in your mouth and suck it. I've just noticed that lovely dressing gown. Just noticed it. It's been flipping blind. Very good quality for 57 and 6. It says 57 and 6 on the price tag. Where? Where? On your sleeve. Mr. Anthony Hancock? Yes? I'm the junior partner in the firm of Crab Crab Scampi and Crab. Charmed. Are you the Mr. Hancock who purchased a stuffed eagle last year from Harold Russell Taxidermist? Oh, you mean Polly? Right, well, I'd like to buy it back. Well, you see, Mr. Russell didn't actually stuff this particular specimen. He bought it from an outside source. A young lady, who I represent, sold it to him. It belonged to her grandfather. And apparently last week he passed on and, well, what do you think? I can't imagine. In his will, he said that he kept a sum of money inside his stuffed eagle. And when he died, it was to be given to his next of kin. Naturally, we wish the money to be with his rightful owner, don't we? Yes, yes, oh yes. Oh, good. So if you'd be so kind as to give me the bird. Oh, what a pity. I beg your pardon? It was destroyed in the fire last week, wasn't it? Oh, yes, yes, a conflagration went up just like that. Oh, dear, I am sorry. Yeah, well, that's the way it goes. So, uh, not a sign of the money, then? No, no, not a trace. Oh. Tragic, isn't it? Well, so I better go and tell him. I'm sorry to have bothered you. No bother at all. I'm sorry we couldn't help. Goodbye. But Olga, do any of us Russians know anything about him? How can we? I understand they found him wandering around Battersea Power Station. Personally, I'm all for him. The sooner someone collects the ten million, the better. And we can all put them out of tourist. It's not going to be as easy as that. There will be a couple of old diehards who will be hard to persuade. This man will have to be very convincing to get their support. See you there, Petrov. Once I put the old babushka to bed, I'll be straight over. Line them up, Olga. No matter the result, it's bound to be a most entertaining evening. 